And welcome back to Project Hospital. Welcome back to Campaign 3, where Barbara Robinson has finally had her surgery. Um, it does seem as though, you know, it's okay, but she still has this respiratory failure. So very keen to get her back to the ICU um, and get her on the artificial ventilation. Uh, very keen to do that. Um, we don't need to find out what the symptom is now, though. Um, because the operation does seem to have dealt with this so we can cancel all of those examinations and just get her on the artificial um, respirator and give her the other meds that will make her more comfortable with the current symptoms that she has uh, the more comfortable she is the better at the same time we have Charles Garcia who is being transported to treatment he is uh, coming in now for his fracture surgery so we've you know the, we're using the surgery departments at the moment um and both for the icu emergency cases which i think if i recall do take precedence over patients that are in uh, lower wards like the high dependency unit and then the regular wards um, on other departments these these will always take precedence and of course um, Barbara who is getting her treatment now so she hasn't had it that she's having it now um, this is an internal medicine uh, issue so this is the internal medicine at uh, surgery and Charles is in a different surgery room because his is orthopedy so he is in their surgery room so it is two different sur surgical teams from two different at departments getting these jobs done um what is uh, worth noting is that there has been a patch update and we have various things going on for a start we can now turn the screen that uh, feature they've been working on it for a little while um, and it is now uh, done and ready for use and seems to be working quite nicely so if we have any awkward positions although this one actually works quite well doesn't it for Barbara but if we have any awkward positions we have these tools to our disposal another thing it says here is that um, the required number of surgery nurses for hospitalization has increased to two this ensures that the whole surgical team will have dedicated roles now this is something that I've always done anyway um, even though it was one surgical nurse and then just a normal nurse to assist, I always got two surgical nurses just because it, I don't know, it, it worked in my mind that they were for the sur surgical team. Um, they were dedicated to that role and it meant that they could swap over. So it didn't matter which one was assisting and which one um, was the surgical nurse, you know, it just, it just worked for me. So that's now become a standard thing for the game. What's this? Bed required for examination. CT is occupied or the staff has been busy for a long time. Should we go and find out uh, what's going on here? Um, let's have a look. Right. So they need the CT scan. So it's a question of, oh, actually, do we see any nurses? see this one here um, interesting so is it a case of maybe the CT room is full or oh, it could be yeah look CT room is in use so that'll be that'll be what it is the CT room is in use um, waiting for a free examination room yeah so he just needs to wait for that that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Although we can give him all of these for the hit to make his symptoms more comfortable. That'll be fine. Um, okay. Um, there's been uh, various bits and bobs that they've updated. Um, one thing, which um, I think is pretty good. Oh, we'll uh, have a look at John Clark first. There's no free bed required for regular hospitalization in internal medicine. It's saying here. Okay. Internal medicine. So if we are oh, already on internal medicine, if we have a look at this, we can see here that the regular ward is indeed full. And we've actually got overcapacity. I don't really understand how that works here. We can see that their work levels are a little crazy over on internal medicine. Now let's have a look. What is it that he needs 
exactly a blood transfusion which can be done here it says um, on any ward so let's have a look what a ward that tends to be fairly quiet is the emergency ward if we have a look here they've got loads of room loads of room so what we might do is see no it won't let us turn him to over to internal medicine uh into emergency it's craziness because of course they do have regular hospitalization available and they do blood transfusions um i don't know if general surgery it's not going to let it doesn't look like it's going to let me change the departments to be honest sometimes i can change the departments sometimes i can't interesting there we go so we've said change over to general we'll have a look at that in a minute so something that's going on a little change that's happened down here i think this is a doctor um okay is down here we have nurses and they've added trauma stabilization to their allowed roles this is for um i think nurses that are only on the um, emergency department because of course trauma is a thing here um so the ones that are situated down here i've put trauma stabilization on but the ones that work from up here i've turned it off and we'll just see how that works uh, see how it goes is it's it's a new thing um uh, uh, yeah indeed it is so uh, look we can now turn this so that we can see him and you can zoom in a lot further if you press and hold the control button um, just so that everybody knows oh and you can see that these walls aren't correct because they you couldn't see them before and they so they've not been decorated properly including look at this the back the back all this it's not been decorated properly Apparently these scenarios have been updated so that they look nice on every angle. But of course we've already got one in use. <laughs> um, so we don't have those updates. Um, but if you were to start the scenario now, from what I understand, they have updated them. Um, a couple of new languages were added, I think. One or two new languages were added. Uh, there's been lots of updates, lots of UI changes and lots of bug fixes. Uh, I recommend going and checking out the, the patch notes sure so yeah he is now look being transported to um general so maybe they couldn't do blood transfusion over on emergency oh and now he's being t now he's trying to get back into internal medicine how very bizarre it's very very annoying okay right so it's it's absolutely going to be determined to do this so internal medicine then all over capacity what we might do is send him to the icu but i don't know if we'll be able to get him onto the icu until he's made it onto the ward this whole the, the way they've changed this ward thing it, it from when i played it last time when I first did these scenarios to now, it seems like it's a step backwards for sure. I seem to have a lot less control uh, over this situation. The only other thing I can, because I, if I recall, I can't even send people home that are on the ward that aren't that bad. Do you know what I mean? So um, let's have a look here. We're on internal medicine. If we have a look at our hospitalized patients, right? Um, we've got some low hazards here okay so if we look at Joseph for example where are you Joseph um, oh look and there we go there's our color scheme low it's an unknown hazard right got you so these light gray ones you know it's all good so he's had his treatment but it says send untreated patient to another hospital, which I don't want to do. I would just like to discharge him early. Um, mm. But I can't. I find that somewhat frustrating. She's got, she's an unknown hazard. She's going to CT for some reason. Well, 
we don't we don't need these examinations i've not done the nighttime rounds so we're getting a lot of unnecessary examinations by the looks of it um we're going to have continued problems with john clark probably until the morning um, but that is a good reminder that we should actually do our uh, rounds here uh, and where are we with these guys so we don't actually need to do all these examinations at all don't need to do those yeah they, they should be absolutely fine now um so let's have a look let's do the rounds uh, because we probably could have stopped uh, these tests here <laughs> right stop it um, I suppose they are still trying to work out what is wrong with them I guess I guess that's what they're trying to do maybe we could try an evaluation where are you so we still don't know what's wrong with this person. Even though they're probably on the wrong department, aren't they? I wonder if we could change him, yeah, over. I think that's what we will we will do. Um, I think we'll turn him over. Um, yes. Okay. He definitely needs this. CT scan so trying to stop other people from using it would be a good thing um, and she could probably do with an x-ray as well this is we're, we're showing us internal medicine but of course at the moment I don't want to send her over to internal medicine because they're constantly complaining that they don't have enough room over there so we probably are going to have to look into that shortly um, if, uh, about adding more beds um, so there's emergency patients We'll go with that. Oh, auto saving. There we go. Um, oh, and apparently now radiology and medical laboratories take the boss. So you know that departments have um, bosses. Uh, they take it from one of these departments. I think it might be emergency. And I have since forgotten after reading it, but they now do follow the boss of another department. So that's that's worth noting. We've got four people in the ICU. Um, and we are happy with them all. That's good. General surgery, we have apparently four hospitalized. Feels like it's more than that, doesn't it? Um, he's fine. This person has their diagnosis and their treatment. Right, we don't need to do all of this. But we, c we will give them that, okay. And this is somebody that we are trying to actually find out what's wrong with them. So they're going to continue doing. So that needs a cardiology. That needs a sonography unit. So maybe we could try these scans. Um, that probably the ECG, the recording of the heart's electrical activity, is probably a waste of time. Looking at looking at this. Um, if we could just, I mean, we've already sent something to the lab. I'd like to try and avoid it as much as possible. We'll keep an eye on him. Uh, yeah, John Clark is back. <laughs> <coughs> oh, God, John Clark. Right, uh, so we can see there is actually a lot of people here. Um, maybe we could, let's have a look at the lows again. Can we move them to a different department, maybe? Um, so, for example... You're on internal medicine. Your treatment is this one here. And this can be done, it seems, on any department. So if we sent you over to... No? What about... She's come straight back. Okay. What if we sent you to... Okay, actually, not you. Let's get rid of low. We don't have any highs. But we do have... A couple of 
unknowns, right? Unknown hazards. Right. Any that we are particularly worried about? No. None. Get rid of all that, though. Um, okay. What we might do is move you to the ICU. Um... Maybe we could try and do that. We do have some mediums kicking around. Any that we're worried about? Not especially. So we can see here that there's a little bit of discomfort from symptoms that we could settle down. Um, and we might send them to the ICU as well, just to free up some space. Because they're already on, let's give them all these meds to make them more comfortable from these symptoms. Because they're already on the ward, I can move them off um, to the ICU. And ICU will pretty much take anything. Whereas um, these other departments, if they don't actually do the treatment, and it can be hard to tell, I think, sometimes, then they won't take them. Um, they won't transfer them. So the ICU, given that we've got a really big ICU, we might need to up the staff from there and use it as an overflow. Um, she is getting additional treatment. So we're just going to make sure they're as comfortable as they possibly can be for the night, which means that John should be able to now come on to this department. Um, okay, so let's start from... So what's, do we know what's going on with Joseph at the moment? No. Uh, we don't. Um, we might... Oh, that's quite high discomfort. Okay. Maybe we won't do that. Why are we going to do another scan? Maybe we did. I don't know. Anyway, let's have a look at the, all the ones here. So at three, four, five, I said five, no, is there six, seven, eight? That's the most that we're going to get. Um, so we're happy with you. And then we're just making sure that there's no unnecessary examinations, that they've received all the meds to deal with all of their symptoms. And just to make sure that there are no pulsating symptoms that could cause collapse so these are the things that that i look for when i'm when i'm going down this uh this list and, and doing this process um i like to make sure that you know we're not wasting resources um and that they're as comfortable as that they can be uh, okay and then one two three four five six seven eight excellent so what have we got going on here that all seems, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with you. Um, I'm happy with you. Excellent. You can see we've had quite a lot of surgeries go through the department. We could do just a little bit more for you. Um, so we've got a bunch of unnecessary tests lined up for this patient and some meds that we could give them for them to be more comfortable. Um, there we go. Excellent, okay. Uh, beautiful. So Joseph is now going to be getting this scan from the sonography room. Let's see if we can try and whittle down what's what's going on here. A clinic patient has spent a lot of time in the hospital without being treated or hospitalized and is getting tired of waiting. CT. So this CT room is, is getting crazy busy, right? And she doesn't even need to be here. Look, we know what's wrong with her. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's 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 hospitalize her. She slipped through the net, didn't she? Being called. By me. Okay. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. How did that happen? We probably should, I suppose, have a look at um our walk ins, see what we have going on. Um so look, we know Oh, she needs to be hospitalised. Okay. On the orthopaedic department. She actually needs to go over to there. As she needs surgery. There we go. So that's you dealt with. 
She's currently going through her examinations. We know what's uh, wrong with you. A compression wrap. Um, can that just be done? They do need to be hospitalized, I think, for a compression wrap. So again, we're going to send them to the orthopedic department and uh, get them hospitalized over there so that we can get this treatment done. Um, this one, we'll do an oral. Um, they've got pain in their ear, so an ear examination probably wouldn't go amiss. Um, Joseph, we've got an emergency coming in. She is being hospitalized, so we've saved that situation. I think uh, as well with this patch, um, instead of it saying this patient is now leaving, they've given up, you do get a slight warning now. Um, so that's nice, a new notification on that one. It's definitely helped, it's working. Um, so, well, it doesn't appear that that helped at all. So they are actually going to be uh, giving him an ECG in the card, in cardio um, for this. As he's going to cardio, let's also do an echo. Um, beyond that, we are going to start getting into proper scans. What is this one here? A, a protein. A C-reactive protein is diagnostic test based on a quick blood test measuring the concentration of C-reactive protein that is indicative of inflammatory and infectious diseases okay well let's do that then that sounds quite good uh we'll we'll look into that for sure she's got swollen tonsils we're getting more invasive here um we don't seem to have the possibility of a differential what other doctors do we have here um what other doctors do we have um, we'll do these, keep him busy, and you never know, we might get lucky. But we could really do with a differential. Um, this is something that we do need to look at. Who is the other doctor that we have here? Now, uh, Patricia here can do a differential. Oh, he's worked it out. He worked it out. Antibiotics. Done. Well done. Okay, we got there. We, we managed to get there. Okay. Um, Joseph, yeah, we're still, not, we're still not entirely sure what's going on with Joseph, are we? Uh, anyway, <laughs> we've got, got entirely distracted from the things that we were achieving over here. Um, okay. Good. Right. So we'll clear them out. Now... We get walk-ins over here as well. So she's waiting for some test results. Um, Jessica here is waiting for some test results. Um, I think what we might do is try a differential as her doctor can do this. Um, that is absolutely possible. A monitored patient is collapsing. Um, that's not good she has a collapsed lung so Susan needs surgery so we'll arrange that for her uh, she actually needs it quite urgently so if we put her to the ICU see if we can get her rushed in quite quickly um, on that one hopefully she'll be fine I'm sure she will be um, Jessica's actually getting her test results so she might actually from her microbial cult cultivation, um, not need the differential, uh, which would be great. Um, that would be great. Um, so in internal medicine in walk-ins, we have a couple of uh, patients here. Um, so Kate does not need to have this scan, but she does need IV. Um, she does need an IV. Hospital hospitalization is required for the treatment, but is currently not available. Okay, um, it is pretty busy over there. It is a true story. So what we will do, um, what we will do is we will have a look at internal medicine. Um, Peter here has pneumonia we will move him off this department there we go 
And then I'm hoping... No? Okay, IV. She needs IV. But it does say, again, any ward. So maybe we could send her... No, it won't let me send her to emergency. Fine. Uh, possibly if we waited for the other guy to be moved properly. But general uh, medicine? Is that what they're called? General surgery? Uh, we'll take her. So, I mean, that works for me. That, that works for me. Uh, Okie dokie. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. Um, which was, was it this lady? No. Are you new? You're new. Okay. So we've got a couple of blood tests and whatnot happening over here. Um, and then what do we have happening on this one? You don't need a CT. Uh, if we could stop that and give them their vitamin D and send them away. And then um, William, oh, it's like I'm pixel hunting. Uh, he's being treated and will be sent home shortly. So that's, that's okay. Uh, in fact, that's pretty fantastic. Um, we'll have a look at that in a moment. They're no longer a favorite patient, so we can get rid of them. Um, she's not in. Is there any other tests that we might be able to do to help uh, with this? Maybe we could do an evaluation. That might be nice. Um, that might be nice. And yes, look, regular hospitalization has become available for internal medicine, even though we've hospitalized the other lady there. So it probably is just a, a, a patient game in that we need to wait for that person to be moved over to the ICU and then the bed becomes available. It makes sense. I'm just being impatient. Um, we could try differential. Uh, where, where is she right now? She's going, she is going to the doctor. Okay, let's open the statistics. Um, it's been... It's been a rough night. They've also done a lot of um, sort of new balances as well with the, the game. Uh, with this uh, latest update as well, which could uh, cause some wild fluctuations over on on here. It should make emergency departments. So where we've been changing um, patients from emergency over to other departments recently, this seems to be something that they've been trying to actually balance in the game uh, so that we won't have to do that as much. Uh, so we might actually see a natural um, increase anyway of patients coming to these three departments and a natural decrease here, which is going to throw everything a little off whack for us um, while we're still trying to balance this hospital and work out exactly what it needs. Um, so the emergency department does seem to be uh, pretty good. They only did 37 examinations. Um, saying that, it's still a lot less um, than the others. So orthopedia did five examinations, internal medicine did 18, and general surgery did nine. So the emergency department is still by far the busiest, um, but it is, I think, uh, falling and we can see that the prestige is falling as well even though no dead patients so we get a big boost for that which is all always nice what's going on Jessica um, we're now drawing blood really I really wish we hadn't done that um, so I'm not worried about this I'm happy with this now we know that this is going to be the CT room that has got incredibly busy. Um, shall we just take a, a little butcher's at that? Is it up? Maybe it's up. No, it's down. No, it's on the other side. <laughs> so, hi. And then this one is none. Look. So we've got two CT rooms. This one at night is set to patients, uh, hospitalized patients only. And this one is set to clinic patients only. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask Joseph now to start taking hospitalized patients as well. And we're going to keep uh, 
this lady over here um, dedicated to hospitalized patients that's what we're going to do what we're going to do i think here because we can see during the day this one is clinic uh, so I think during the day we'll make this one hospitalised only and see what happens because this is actually uh, low during the day, uh, this is actually low during the day and so is this one. So we, we'll uh, balance that out and see, uh, see what happens there. Um, so pretty happy with that. Uh, what have we got going on over here? So the medical lab seems to be fine. Um, the, the staff satisfaction is low. Um, good boss, need reduced nice environment yeah quite low scores though they don't think about it very often so um but we've been cleaning up that part uh, that department they were very very filthy so you know, we'll give that time to trickle through um we're expecting to see an increase we can see here the nurses station has gone up to medium on workload um and i'm not surprised because we've been sending quite a few patients through to there uh, patients though they don't really need any treatment or care uh, particularly not in any a major way so they shouldn't create too much of a problem so we can see here in general surgery um, we've had a critical um, in the evening there uh, where is general surgery it's here which is this diagnos diagnosis room here um, these two are low so this is probably more of a staffing thing than anything else so it could be uh, a doctor um, that we could do with in the on-call room um, that uh, i suppose could be advanced diagnosis um, let's have a look here so we've got Paul here, he's a people person, so he reveals hidden perks of people after interacting with them. He's pleasant, which means he gives the nice staff modifier when interacting with the patient. And he's a fast mover, um, along with the fact that he's great at diagnosing. So what we're going to do is we're going to employ Paul here. And what we're going to do is take off assist at surgery so that he works purely on diagnosing patients and just see if we can... Um, and he's going to do this at night because uh, we can see that there's certainly plenty of rooms to do it so we're going to see if this is a doctor issue or a nurse issue um, just see how that goes um, that's all we're going to do there for the moment internal medicine look at the on-call room for the doctors that is at critical and we've got critical uh, room use um, it's insane so now let's have a look is it the diagnostic rooms uh, yeah so we've got two critical diagnostic rooms here um, what I would say though is that these seem to be okay all this seems to be okay um, so that's good but the wards are probably high indeed they are so okay uh, this is the on-call room for uh, the doctors um, and we are going to, I think, again, given that the critical rooms are, again, the diagnostic rooms, and this one was medium. Um, so the waiting times in those diagnostic rooms is probably quite high. So what we're going to do, again, is look for a diagnostic doctor that we like. Um, and here we've got a people person. They reveal hidden perks of people, but they're also a good boss. So we're going to employ... Um, who is this? Kate here. I'm going to employ Kate. Take off assisted surgery so that she can concentrate on diagnosis only. Now, the boss on this department is currently Jennifer Davis, which is this lady here. Um, Jennifer is actually a hedonist, so she spends twice as much time enjoying food. Um, so, and her rest levels, but her rest levels do decrease slower. Well, what we're going to actually do is we're going to now make Kate King the new chief doctor here, I think. Um, Kate, not Davis, Kate King. There we go. She is the new, she is the new boss. And we'll see how that goes. Now, we're only going to put in one. Uh, I think for the night and uh, and see how that develops we don't want to do too much it's expensive getting all these uh, staff members in to say the least um, and then we've got 
orthopedy. So we've gone to critical and high, although the work levels are low. So if we, I think they're, oh no, they're here. Um, so the critical room again is the diagnostic um, room and the others are low. So it's hard to know whether this is nurse or doctor, um, but we seem to be going with the theme of doctor. So let's, <laughs> let's continue that. Um, let's see. Um, so Kate here is great. She has the good boss. She has the people person thing. She's loyal, so we pay her less. Um, and she has an extra talent for diagnosing. Um, so we're going to employ her, definitely, um, and take her off assisted surgery so she can do nothing but diagnosing patients in case there is a long queue there that isn't nurse-based, it's hard to know. Um, and the chief doctor here at the moment is Jane Martin, this lady here. Um, and she has clean shoes, which is very good, but Kate here just seems like the lady that we want. So we're going to change the chief doctor over. So I'm happy with those changes uh, for now. I think that'd be great. Uh, oh, look at this. So we now know what's wrong with this lady. She's having her department changed. And I think she's going to need to be hospitalized. Yes, so we'll, we'll, we'll get that done. We don't need the evaluation anymore on that lady. Um, no. And oh, look, we found that Jessica Smith uh, needs this treatment. Um, surgery department. So does she need hospitalizing? Diagnostic unit at general surgery department or office? Possibly not. We'll, we'll have a go at just giving her the meds and seeing what occurs. Um, Joseph, we're still unsure of. And, uh, and Barbara, we're still unsure of, but I'm sure they'll work it out. Um, I'm sure they will. Um, as 8 a.m. has arrived, the wards are emptying out and a new day begins. Indeed it does. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the episode, if you did please hit that like button. As long as you are here, why not take your first step on the path to total coolness by supporting me via Patreon. The cooler you are, the harder I work, which means even more shizwa. 